Thank you for your interest in the Checkbook IRA. My name is Larissa Green, I'm with Advana IRA, and I'm gonna take you through this short presentation on this strategy specific to being able to write checks and receive income directly to a bank account associated with your IRA. My name is Larissa Green. I've been with Advana since 2011. I do education and business development. I provided my contact information here on this slide so that if you have any questions on any information we go over, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can either call me or send me an email. I'd be happy to hear from you. So as we go through this presentation, I'm gonna talk about this strategy in some specific details, but what we can't do is help you decide whether or not this is the best strategy for you. So we don't give any legal tax or investment advice. I'll cover the pros and cons of having checkbook control. And then ultimately, if you have questions as to whether or not this will be the right way for you to go for your IRA, you should check with your CPA or your attorney. If you don't have somebody on your professional team that can help answer those questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I may be able to refer you to some professionals that can help you. Advana IRA is a third party administrator for self-directed retirement accounts. And so what that means basically is that we hold the retirement account for you. You find the investment and we help you get it done in the name of the retirement account. We have two offices. We're in the Tampa Bay area of Florida and we're also in Atlanta, Georgia but we can help clients nationwide and even worldwide. So if you have a US-based retirement account, you can self-direct it and you can invest in things inside the US and also outside of the US. So very important, we have clients invested worldwide. So it's up to you, you find the investment and we will help you get it done. We have more than a billion in assets under management. We're close to 7,000 clients and we'd be happy to help you and answer any questions that you have. We give a very personal feel for all of our services, meaning that you get an account manager assigned to your account. I think that really sets us apart from our competitors because you have one person helping you understand contribution limits, taking distributions, walking you through making investments. And so that gives you the opportunity to form a relationship with the person that's ultimately assisting you with your account. What is a self-directed IRA? Well, our definition of a self-directed IRA is much different from your brokerage firm's definition. So, you know, a lot of times people will tell me, well, I have a self-directed IRA with my brokerage firm. And what they do basically is allow you to choose from a list of investments that they give you and then make those purchases or trades. But what we're doing instead is we don't sell any investments at all. It's gonna be up to you to find the investment and make the account, put the account to work essentially. And we'll only hold assets outside of the market. So we only handle privately traded investments or, or purchased investments, things like tangible real estate. So owning one, two, three Main Street in the name of your IRA account, maybe private mortgages and private placements, tangible like holding precious metals, foreign currency and future trading. And there's so many other things and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but just to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we mean self-directed IRA. So again, Avana doesn't sell any investments at all. It's gonna be up to you to find the investment and put the money to work. And here's a quick list of the self-directed plans. I always like to share this list because uh, a lot of times people are under the impression that it has to be a Roth IRA in order to self-direct their account. I'm not really sure where that comes from, but the truth is if it ends in IRA, it can be self-directed. There's also some other plans like any former employer plan can be self-directed. And I put emphasis on former employer plan because a lot of times if you're still a participant in a plan, that administrator is not gonna allow you to move funds to an IRA in order to self-direct. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. So I um, really encourage you to reach out to the plan administrator and find out if they allow in-service distributions for rollover. Um, and if they do, then you can certainly move a portion of those funds over to self-direct. I also have up here individual K or solo 401k plan, as many people know them by. And so if you're sole proprietor or an independent business owner, you have the option of having a solo 401k plan and um, you really could take advantage of your contribution limits with these types of plans. I also have on this slide health savings accounts and education savings accounts. And I know these accounts aren't uh, retirement accounts, but the rules for self-directing them are exactly the same. So you have the ability to open and fund these accounts and then therefore self-direct them with Advana as well. So here's a list of assets that we see or have seen at Advana and 
Just keep in mind that this isn't the complete list. The IRS actually hasn't said, here's a list of assets to choose from. What they've done instead is given us two asset classes that you actually can't invest in. So there's only two, life insurance and collectibles. And then outside of that, the sky is just about the limit. The only other limitation they put on there is what they consider disqualified individuals from your IRA, so meaning people you can't transact with. I'm not gonna go into that in this seminar, but what I would suggest doing is checking out our video library. There is a lot of other webinars where we cover in-depth disqualified persons and prohibited transactions, and it's really good information to have. So if you're considering self-directing your account, I would definitely recommend familiarizing yourself with those rules and checking out our video library to do so. And again, if you have questions on that, I encourage you to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. So on this um, list here, you'll see things like real estate, so rental homes, whether it's short-term or long-term, you see commercial real estate, fixer-uppers, multifamily condos, duplexes, syndications, private stock, even things like joint ventures, movie projects, farm animals. And so again, as long as the investment is an arm's length transaction and it's not prohibited within the rules, it is likely something you can do in your IRA. So if you're thinking about a specific st strategy, that's when I would reach out and find out if it's something you can do in your IRA. So let's jump into our topic here, checkbook control with an IRA. What does that look like? And what's the difference between actually having checkbook control and not having checkbook control. Well, when you don't have checkbook control, and I would say this is the way most investments are made within an IRA is directly through the IRA administrator. So moving my money to advance an IRA, having an account manager that assists me in making the investment, the investment being made in the name of the IRA account, so advance an IRA for benefit of Larissa Green, IRA number 1234. Once the investment is made and money is moved from my IRA to the investment provider, then any expenses, are gonna be paid out of the IRA and any earnings are gonna go back directly to the IRA. And so that's very typical in our world. But an alternative to that would be checkbook control. And there's two types of entities you can use in order to have checkbook control. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But one entity is an LLC and that gives you direct checkbook control. And then you can also use a trust which gives you indirect checkbook control. But basically having a third party bank account where those investments are made in the name of that entity and income is received to that checking account and um, expenses are paid from that checking account. So that's how you would have checkbook control. So ways to achieve checkbook control through two different types of entities. So the first one is an LLC and the other option is a trust. We usually typically will see more LLCs and you'll learn why in just a second, but really a lot of people love trusts and you can certainly use those as well. So with an LLC, the IRA holder can be the manager. So that's gonna be different from the trust and maybe that's why I don't see as many trusts. So with an LLC, you'll have direct checkbook control if you make yourself the manager because the manager has that check writing capability. They create an LLC, and again, it's typically not in the name of the IRA, but a creative name for an LLC, maybe like Sunshine LLC. And then the member of that LLC is simply the IRA. The trust has a trustee who has checkbook control, and it is not direct checkbook control to the account holder. So the trustee has to be a non-disqualified third party. Um, the trustee is the one with check writing capability, and that's why I considered indirect checkbook control for the client. The assets are titled in the name of the trust and the IRA is both the grantor and the beneficiary. So key components of trust, again, the grantor, who is the IRA, is, contributes assets to the trust and the beneficiary, again, is the IRA and the ultimate recipients of, recipient of the assets in the trust. And I have just a quick list of types of trusts up here. Typically what we see for an IRA is gonna be a personal property trust or a land trust. And I'll talk about that in just a second as well. Um, but basically, again, that trustee has to be a third party non-disqualified to the IRA account holder. So what that means is that it can't be the IRA holder, the IRA holder's spouse, children, grandchildren, parents, grandparents, um, or any spouses of those. So again, those are uh, disqualified persons to the IRA. Now, there could be some others considered disqualified. So if you have questions on that, please let me know. Um, but just keep that in mind when you're deciding what type of entity you want to use. And if you'll notice, um, individuals that I didn't mention that are considered disqualified are going to be um, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins. But again, that could be a gray area. And I encourage you to reach out to me with questions on that. 
So how does the trust work? Well, again, you can use a personal property trust or a land trust. You would have a bank account for that trust, a third party trustee, and that third party trustee has checkbook control. I just wanna note though, with a land trust, we really could treat it like real estate, meaning that you don't have to have a bank account for a land trust. If you wanted to purchase property in a land trust, you still have to have a third party trustee, but Advana can receive um, checks for rent. We can pay expenses directly out of the IRA account on behalf of that trust. So you don't need a bank account in the case of a land trust. Now, certainly you could have one. And again, if you use a per personal property trust, in that case, you would have a bank account with your trustee having check writing capability. So with the LLC, it's a little bit different. There's members or shareholders or basically owners of that LLC, which in this case would be the IRA. The manager could be the um, IRA account holder if you decide to do it that way. And that IRA account holder as manager would have check writing capability. And basically what sort of describes the members and the manager and their roles is going to be the operating agreement. So that document is very important to the IRA because it names the IRA as the member. And so when you look at the operating agreement, you're gonna see the member information as Advanta IRA for benefit of Larissa Green IRA number 1234. So what are the rules for using an LLC? Well, it must be manager managed. It cannot be member managed again, just simply because the IRA is the member and it can't be a manager because it's an entity. Um, you wanna make sure that you're including the percentage of ownership. So most of the time for checkbook control, you're gonna see it as a single member LLC and that single member as the IRA and it owns 100% obviously. But we do see multi-member LLCs and the reason for that might be partnering IRAs, for example. So my IRA and my husband's IRA might partner. And in that case, then we need to show percentages of ownership on the operating agreement. And this is very important because my husband and I are technically disqualified from transacting with each other, but we can partner. And so if we decide to partner into the LLC, then our percentage of ownership is going to be based directly on the amount of money we both are bringing to the, the LLC. So if we own it 50-50, then we both have to come up with 50% of the funds that we want to put into the LLC. And then going forward, our percentage of ownership can never change, meaning if down the line the LLC needs another $20,000, then we mo must both have the ability to put another $10,000 in to the LLC bank account from an IRA, and that's very, very important. If it's a single member LLC, there's no tax return um, required. Um, and a lot of times people also say, well, how is this um, allowed? How are, how are we allowed to have checkbook control when there's so many rules for self-directing your IRA and you're included as a disqualified person? Well, the IRS didn't like it. And so there's this case, Swanson versus Commissioner, where basically they did challenge this in tax court. So they took Swanson to court and they said he formed this LLC, he's the manager and he's writing checks. And the tax court actually said, well, you know what? Swanson's not paying himself a salary, so there's no current benefit to him. He's not doing anything prohibited within the LLC. And so we're going to allow it. And so that's really the first case that we saw that supported checkbook control through an LLC. And then it was reiterated, um, you'll see there in a tax court memo, TL Ellis. So if you guys want to look up that information or you have questions, just let me know. So I'm going to go through a case study here with the three different strategies to really kind of show you how this works. And we're going to look at Joe's real estate deal and dive into it with the different strategies. So Joe has 150000 in his traditional IRA and he's in investing into real estate. He finds a single family home he wants to rent. It's going to, the purchase price is $100,000 and he determines it needs $20,000 worth of work. And I just want to take a quick second to point out to you that Joe is doing all of the um, sort of due diligence on this investment. So he's going to find the property, look over the property, see what work needs to be done, and ultimately make the offer on the property. However, he's going to involve us when he gets to the offer stage. So he's going to say, hey guys, I want to write a contract. How is it get written in this case? And this strategy is going to be written in the name of the IRA, Advanta IRA for benefit of Joe Smith's IRA, number um, 800123. From there, he, after he does the repairs, he projects it's going to earn $1,000 a month in um, rental income. So he's going to open and fund his Advanta IRA account. He identified the property and wrote the contract with the help of his account manager properly in the name of the IRA. Once it's in the name of the IRA, he's actually going to sign it, 
so that we know he read and approved the contract. And from there, Advanta will sign it as well. If the contract is accepted, then we're gonna issue the earnest uh, money deposit out of his IRA account directly to the entity he's working with for closing. So he's gonna let us know who the title agent is or the closing attorney, and we'll work with them as well to make sure the closing gets done on time. Everything from contract to close will be titled in the name of the IRA. We do have Joe read and approve everything prior to closing. And then once we go to close, we'll go ahead and fund that investment to help for the purchase. So after closing, Joe can go online anytime he needs an expense paid through his online portal or we'll reach out to his account manager to have those invoices paid. When he puts a tenant in place, the tenant will write checks directly to Advanta IRA for benefit of Joe's account. Joe can either collect the rent, he can have his tenant drop the rent at one of our two offices, or the tenant can send the checks directly to Advanta for deposit to his IRA, IRA account. This is very important. Joe wants to make sure that his tenant is always making checks paid directly to the IRA. Joe cannot accept and deposit rent checks. That does not work. Um, if Joe tries to reimburse his IRA or send a check from himself to his IRA account because he accepted either cash or check made out to him, we can only deposit that money as a contribution. And so that is not going to work and is prohibited. He wants to make sure that any expenses and any income flows directly through the retirement account. That's very important. So now if Je uh, Joe decides he wants checkbook control and he's gonna use an LLC, what does that look like? Well, Joe again, open and funds his IRA account with Advana. Money always has to come to Advana first, that's very important. And then from there, Joe is gonna work with his attorney or CPA to set up the LLC and um, form the operating agreement for this LLC. So Joe, Sets up Sunshine LLC and he shows his IRA as the member on the operating agreement. So in that third box there, you'll see Advanta IRA for benefit of Joe Smith IRA number 800-123. So that's very important because we're talking here again about an entity that's essentially owned by the IRA. And how do you show that? It's on the operating agreement. And so we need to see the operating agreement drafted with Joe's signature. Um, as read and approved and also as the manager and then we'll execute with our signature on behalf of the IRA account. Once that's done, Joe can open the um, LLC bank account, let us know where to send the funds and we'll go ahead and send the funds from the IRA account to the LLC bank account. From there, Joe will sign all documents for expenses as the manager, he'll deposit rents, He'll also write checks for expenses all through this LLC bank account, and it's still under that retirement umbrella as demonstrated through the operating, uh, um, operating agreement, which shows the IRA as the member in this case or owner of that LLC. So the difference, again, between a trust and an LLC is going to be that Joe cannot be the trustee in this case, and so let's go through that example. So the first step again is gonna be Joe opens and funds his Advanta IRA account. That's always gonna be the first step. We need the funds to come to Advanta in order to show the IRS that this money is still under the retirement account umbrella. Joe is gonna work with his CPA or attorney to form the trust documents. He's gonna show the IRA as both the grantor and the beneficiary. And that's illustrated again as Advanta IRA for benefit of Joe Smith IRA number 800-1234. Joe names a non-disqualified third party as trustee. So again, it can't be himself or any of those individuals he's related to that are considered prohibited or disqualified. Joe is gonna read and approve the trust documents. His trustee is gonna sign the trust documents and then Advanta IRA will sign and execute on behalf of the IRA. Joe's trustee will obtain a tax ID for the trust and open a bank account and from there, Advanta IRA will send the funds on Joe's direction to the bank account. Now Joe's trustee will sign documents for any investments that he makes. They'll also um, pay expenses and receive income all through that trust bank account. An important point we like to um, really stress here is that even though you have checkbook control either directly or indirectly, it's very important that you move funds between the IRA and yourself um, 
with specific steps so that you're not doing anything that would be considered maybe a disqualified distribution, for example. So if you ever want to take money out of your IRA as a distribution, just because you have checkbook in hand does not mean that you can write yourself a check. It's very important that many first come back to Advana. And that's same with any additional contributions. So if you have a single member LLC or you have a trust and you want to make a contribution to your IRA, you can't simply write a check and deposit it to that third party bank account. It has to come through Advana. So flow of funds always through Advana if you're trying to get funds into or out of your IRA. So if you want to take a distribution and you have a trust or an LLC, those funds have to first go back to Advana IRA. They're deposited as earnings to that entity and then the owner of the account can request a distribution. Remember, that's a taxable event and even if you have a Roth IRA, it's still reported to the IRS. That is an IRS requirement. So you wanna make sure that you're doing that properly. And then that's the same with a contribution. A contribution check would come first to Advana. Advana would then wait for direction from the account holder. Once we receive it, we would send the funds to that entity for deposit. So very important that you remember those steps. The other um, alternative to that is anytime you need to move funds, um, you reach out to Advana and make sure that you're taking the proper steps to do so. So a reason we might see people using checkbook control entities is because they might be partnering funds, whether they're partnering IRAs or they're partnering personal funds with IRAs. Um, it's really up to you, but the strategy certainly will still work without checkbook control, but this might ease some of that burden, meaning that if you're using IRA funds, let's say it's you and your spouse and you're using IRA funds, and then you have a non-disqualified individual or even another family member using personal cash, this might make it easier, meaning that if you have an um, IRA with two IRA partners, um, or excuse me, an investment with two IRA partners and then one personal cash individual partner, and you have a rental property, if you're not using checkbook control, you would have the tenant write two separate checks, one to the IRAs and then one to the, the individual holding the investment personally. Another way to ease that though, of course, that burden would be very simply to have a property manager as well. So again, it's not necessary. There's other solutions as well, but this may make it a little easier for you. of buying directly through the IRA. So easier to keep at arm's length. So when you have your IRA administrator between you and the investments, we're helping you write checks for expenses and receive income. You're not going to accidentally write a check to yourself for a distribution because you don't have the ability to. You're less likely to engage in prohibited transactions. A lot of times when people have checkbook control, we just simply stop hearing from them. They're not required to reach out to their um, account manager when they're making an investment and so they simply don't. If you were making an investment directly through your administrator and said, hey, I want to lend money to my mom, then we would say, I'm sorry, that's prohibited. You can't do that. But when you have checkbook control, it may be very easy to forget the rules and do something that's considered prohibited. We also keep clear records on your IRA account. So when you're making investments directly through the IRA, we're going to be able to print a statement in one minute of every transaction, everything down to the penny in and out of the retirement account. But then, of course, on the, the um, con side, you're not going to have the ability to write a check immediately for an investment that you want to get done. And so if you're, you know, having um, negotiations over an investment, over a cup of coffee and a handshake on a Saturday morning, of course, Advana IRA's offices are not open. And so we can't accommodate that. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And again, we work very quickly. So if you have an investment where the strategy um, requires that we move very quickly on your behalf. A lot of times when you keep that line of um, communication open with your account manager, we can do it. But of course, having checkbook control may make that investment a little bit easier depending on what strategy you're using. Um, pros and cons of using checkbook control. Um, so of course, quick access to IRA funds. Literally, you always have your investment checkbook along with you. And so if you are out at a real estate investment club meeting and you find an investment that you want to make and the terms are agreeable, you can do that because you have checkbook access to your IRA. You can hold more investments and have lower fees. So when we're looking at an entity like an LLC or a trust, we're just charging fees based on that single entity. And then under that entity, you may have any number of investments. So one LLC could hold four or five rental properties, a mortgage may have um, some gold and silver bars invested through the LLC as well. All of those things are within that entity. And so for us, it's just one annual fee 
for the asset that we're actually holding, which is the LLC or the trust. But when you hold all of those investments through Advana, of course, more investments or assets means more fees. Having an entity may also allow you to have um, some some possible protection, asset protection and anonymity. So we really, again, we can't give you any legal advice. You'll definitely want to check with your attorney on this, but you may have some protection depending on the entity and you may also have some anonymity. So if you're looking to keep your IRA's name out of the record, you can do that maybe through an entity. But if you're really looking just to keep your name out of public record, you can also leave your name off of your investment documents when you're making investments directly through the administrator. We'll use your account number as the identifying factor for the investment, and you'll have the ability to leave your name off of that record. Um, of course, the cons are gonna be um, you know, just in direct opposite to that of using the administrator directly. You're gonna be responsible for keeping good records just as we do. Um, you don't have that oversight or an individual um, sort of reminding you of what the rules are prior to making the investment. But, but I do wanna mention that you still do have an account manager with Advana even when you have checkbook control. And so it's always possible to reach out to that person if you have questions on investments you're making. Um, and again, easier to engage in prohibited transactions when you have the checkbook in hand. So which strategy is best for you? And remember, I told you we don't give you investment, legal, or um, tax advice. So it's going to be very important that you reach out to your attorney or your CPA, somebody on your professional team that can help you decide whether or not this strategy is right for you. And sometimes people will tell me, um, you know, I heard about checkbook control, but that's definitely not for me. I'm not good with record keeping. I want to pay you to do the record keeping. And so if you know that about yourself, or maybe you're very meticulous and you're very good at record keeping and you're comfortable with this strategy, ultimately it's going to come down to your comfort level and what you decide is best for you. So as I mentioned earlier, we have events and webinars going on every week. They're always at no cost and no obligation. And you can go to advantaira.com forward slash events to find our calendar and register for any events we have going on. You can also check out past events at our video library or search Advanta IRA on YouTube. And you can keep up to date with all the latest industry news by signing up for our blog. You can do all of those things at our webinar, again, advantaira.com, or excuse me, at our website at advantaira.com. Opening and funding a self-directed IRA is actually very easy. A lot of times people will say, well, how, how long does this take a couple of weeks? It actually just takes one day. We have you complete, out our, complete our forms. Um, the account is open usually the same day or the very next day. What usually takes a little bit of time is funding that account. We're all, always sort of at the mercy of the current account um, administrator. So if you have um, an account with a brokerage firm, it takes as long as it takes them to process a transfer in order to get our account funded. So we can usually give you an idea of those processing times if you reach out to us and tell us who your um, brokerage firm administrator is, because we deal with them all the time. But just keep that in mind. So if you're already out there looking for your self-directed investments, now is the time to get your account open because there might be some lag time there on getting your account funded. And if you would like the opportunity or the ability to make an investment, um, within just a couple of days, then we really need to get your account open and start that funding process as well. Once your account is open and funded, you're ready to go. Again, my name is Larissa Green. I'm with Advana IRA. I work in education and business development. Here's my contact information for you as well. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for viewing this presentation.